Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. But with that said, let's get to the topic of the day. And the topic of the day is America's favorite college football soap opera. That's right. As Caleb Williams turns former number one quarterback in the high school class of 2021. I know technically Quinn Ewers became the number one quarterback in that class when he reclassified. But for all intents and purposes, Caleb Williams, best quarterback in the high school class of 2021, went to Oklahoma, was completely awesome in the half season that he played at Oklahoma. And then following Lincoln Riley's departure, entered the transfer portal. Entered the transfer portal after the Alamo Bowl. Entered the transfer portal right around the 1st of January. And I think we all kind of thought, by now, we would have a resolution into the soap opera as Caleb Williams turns. Well, this weekend, I think that we did get two pieces of information that are completely worth investigating right here, right now on the Aaron Torres Sports Podcast. And so let's get into them because at some point, I do think that we have to get a resolution on this situation with Caleb Williams. And the reason why is pretty simple. If you believe that Caleb Williams is ultimately going to end up at USC and they are still the leader for all of the crystal ball picks at 24-7 Sports for Caleb Williams, well, guess what? By the end of this week, he has to enroll at USC to be eligible for spring practice, so it is something to keep an eye on. But with that said, like I said, two big storylines that came from the Caleb Williams reporting, Caleb Williams news cycle over the weekend that I want to get into here. The first, and I do think this is significant, there was a tweet put out by a man named Dean Blevins that says that Caleb Williams is down to two final schools. It is down to USC, and in a bit of surprise, LSU is also in the mix, okay? And why this is important is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Dean Blevins is a former Oklahoma quarterback who covers the team now in Oklahoma City. And so I bring it up because Dean Blevins, I do not believe, would put out this report unless he was 100% positive that Oklahoma was absolutely 100% out of the mix for Caleb Williams, right? First of all, he lives in Oklahoma. He covers Oklahoma. He is an Oklahoma legend. I suspect that he got this piece of information from someone deep embedded within the Oklahoma football community, probably somebody within that athletic department, probably somebody within that football building. I don't know, Dean Blevins. I'm just putting two and two together. But two, what I would say why I believe this report is accurate Do you want to be the guy in Oklahoma that was dead wrong on the Caleb Williams reporting and he ends up back at Oklahoma, let alone somewhere else? And so to me, I believe this is a piece of credible information, and I believe more importantly, it aligns with something else that was reported this weekend, and this was a little bit more message board fodder, and I don't think this ever came from anywhere official, but there were reports that Caleb Williams was seen cleaning out his locker And Caleb Williams was seen, uh, not cleaning out his locker, excuse me, cleaning out his dorm room in Oklahoma. He was seen leaving the Oklahoma campus, essentially moving off of campus and getting out of Norman once and for all. And so with that said, I don't think ultimately that piece of news that he's leaving Oklahoma is all that surprising. Obviously, the day he entered the portal, Dylan Gabriel committed to Oklahoma, which said to me that Oklahoma did not plan on having Caleb Williams back. And so now I want to look at what I believe is a fascinating piece of news out of Dean Blevins that LSU is now in the mix for Caleb Williams. We've talked a ton about USC. We know what USC has to sell. We know that Lincoln Riley is at USC and that Lincoln Riley, of course, recruited Caleb Williams to Oklahoma and that Lincoln Riley is a great sell, a great pitch along with USC for Caleb Williams services for the next two years before he goes to the NFL where he'll likely be the number one pick in the 2024 NFL draft, I guess it would be. So I don't want to spend the next few minutes talking about USC because I think we already kind of spent so much time talking about why USC makes sense for Caleb Williams and why they are the favorite. So instead, what I'd rather do is spend the next few minutes talking about LSU, is it realistic, why it makes sense, why it doesn't, all that good stuff. And first of all, let me say this. 
I think LSU makes more sense today as I record here January 24th. And by the way, I should always mention this is always subject to change. This could change 10 minutes after this video goes live. But I bring it up because I believe that LSU is more of a factor today than the day Caleb Williams entered the transfer portal for one simple reason. Brian Kelly, for all the criticism that he's gotten since the day he left Notre Dame for LSU, Brian Kelly's cleaned up in the transfer portal. I saw on Monday that 24-7 Sports released an updated transfer portal winner's power ranking. Basically, the top-ranked recruiting classes just within the transfer portal. You know who's number one? It's LSU and Brian Kelly, and I give this guy so much credit, right? Because he comes in late. The 2022 high school recruiting class is falling apart. They all committed to Coach O. They don't know Brian Kelly. He has to put his staff together on the fly. Most of his staff, if not virtually all of it, stays at Notre Dame. And so there was no realistic way for Brian Kelly to clean up and close on the high school class. It just wasn't realistic for him to close on the class of 2022. And I do believe that in the bigger picture, LSU needs to get back to recruiting Louisiana high schools. I believe they need to get back to signing top five high school recruiting classes. But it wasn't realistic for 2022. So rather than fret, rather than fear, rather than scramble, you know what Brian Kelly does? He goes out and crushes the transfer portal, including a bunch of guys that if Caleb Williams were to commit to LSU, could help Caleb Williams tomorrow if he shows up on campus. First of all, offensive line was always going to be a place that LSU targeted in the transfer portal. They might have gotten the best offensive tackle in the portal this offseason as Miles Frazier, a former freshman All-American from Florida, Florida International, excuse me, I say Florida Atlantic, Florida International, has signed with LSU. Now, you may be sitting there saying, well, offensive tackle, Florida International. I'm telling you this right now. I follow the portal pretty closely. This kid was as heavily recruited as any player, I would argue, outside maybe those top two or three quarterbacks, as heavily recruited as anybody in the portal all offseason. This kid had offers not only from LSU, but from Auburn, from A&M, from Florida State. I mean, think about just A&M. Take out Auburn, take out Florida State. A&M's pretty much on the brink of having a playoff caliber roster, and they went out and recruited this guy and tried to convince him to come to Aggieland because they believe he could be that good. So Caleb Williams comes to LSU, obviously, uh, you know, injuries pending and all that stuff, but he's got himself a premier offensive tackle to likely protect his blind side. Beyond that, credit Brian Kelly. Noah Kane from Louisiana former star running back at Penn State. He's dealt with some injuries. He's dealt with some weird stuff. Commits to LSU. Another piece to that offense under Brian Kelly in year one. And that's on top of all of the talent that was already in the program. Now, obviously, if there was so much talent, Coach O would still be there. But at the end of the day, the one thing you can't say about Coach O, he did not leave the cupboard bare. He did not leave the roster bare, especially at the skill position, you know, with, in terms of skill position talent. As a matter of fact, if you're looking for pluses versus minuses for USC versus LSU, I think the receiver room at LSU is better, even though Lincoln Riley, to his credit, has cleaned up in the portal at the skill positions. LSU obviously has Keishon Boutte, love that name. He was phenomenal prior to injury this past season. Keishon Boutte, as I record right now, set to come back to LSU. On top of that really strong freshman class this past season at LSU at wide receiver, and this was without an offensive line to really block for Max Johnson, and I don't think Max Johnson is half the quarterback that Caleb Williams was. So you look at some of the guys coming back. You look at Jack Beach, Betch, 43 catches, 489 yards, three touchdowns. LSU fans, forgive me. Is it Betch or Beach? I, I, I always get confused. I think it's Betch. The point being, 43 catches, three touchdowns. He was awesome, over 10 yards, 11 yards per catch. On top of that, Malik Neighbors, 28 catches, almost 15 yards per catch and four touchdowns. Brian Thomas Jr., 28 catches, two touchdowns scored. And so I bring all of this up just to say that the skill position, the, the, the wide receiver room at LSU, I think over the next two years, is going to be as good as anybody's in college football. And so if you want guys that are going to make you look good, Caleb Williams, LSU, it, you could do a lot worse than LSU. You could do a lot worse than LSU, by the way, playing marquee games every single week in the toughest division in the toughest conference of college football. On top of that, say what you want about Brian Kelly. The guy wins. The guy is successful. The guy has put a lot of guys into the NFL. And so that's why if Caleb Williams is interested in LSU, I get it. 
You want to go play for one of the most successful coaches in college football over the last 10 years. You want to go play with a loaded skill position group with a rebuilding offensive line that's probably, honestly, further ahead than than USC is right now. And I would say the offense, while Brian Kelly certainly does not have the pedigree of Lincoln Riley, I think the pieces are in place for this offense to be in better position to have immediate success than USC, even though I love Lincoln Riley. That offensive line is still a piece of work. Uh, The skill position, it's a bunch of transfers and trying to fit in and trying to figure out who goes where and all that good stuff. And so I'm just saying... I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that just because Lincoln Riley is at USC that they're going to put up 45 points a game because, I, again, I still think the offensive line, the skill positions are very much a work in progress. At the same time, though, what I would also say is this, is at the end of the day, Caleb Williams' father, we haven't heard a ton from him on the record, but all the reports, most of them through Pete Thamel, I believe now he's at ESPN as opposed to Yahoo. But I bring it up because most of the reports from Pete Thamel are pretty straightforward. The number one decision in this process, the number one reason for the decision in this process will not be NIL. It will not be exposure. It will not be uh, branding, marketing, social media, whatever. It's going to be who is going to best prepare Caleb Williams for the NFL and who is going to best prepare him to, as I said, be the number one pick in the 2024 NFL draft. And that's where I only hesitate a little bit on LSU. I think LSU has a ton to offer and I think they have more to offer now as opposed to what they did three weeks ago when Caleb Williams hit the portal because of all the guys that they brought in. But my bigger concern would be point blank, straight up, are the guys at LSU better prepared to pre- to prepare Caleb Williams for the NFL? And I don't believe that you can say the answer is yes, especially if the competition is USC. First of all, Brian Kelly, love him. I actually like Brian Kelly more than most people. Most people seem to not like Brian Kelly for some reason that doesn't make sense to me. Brian Kelly, one thing he hasn't developed is NFL quarterbacks. I mean, he's, he's developed great offensive linemen. He's developed skill position guys, Chase Claypool, Will Fuller, guys like that, defensive players, uh, Jalen Smith, Jeremiah Wusu. The one, guy, the one position they really haven't developed guys is a quarterback. I know Ian Book played for the New Orleans Saints this year, but clearly the New Orleans Saints don't have everything figured out because Sean Payton might retire. We saw that report this weekend. And so beyond that, what I would also say on top of that is that you look at some of Brian Kelly's hires, and while I think they're really good hires, I trust Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly's knocked out like every single hire that he's made through the years, whether it was uh, Clark Lee, whether it was Mike Elko at one point, whether it was Marcus Freeman, whether it was some of the offensive staff that he has had. Tommy Reese, now still at Notre Dame. It is worth noting that the guys he has brought in to LSU do not have a ton of NFL background, which is what Caleb Williams is looking for. Not saying it's wrong for LSU, just saying it's a tough sell in Caleb Williams' recruitment. Mike Denbrock, of course, he is from Cincinnati. He was Cincinnati's offensive coordinator. Mike Denbrock is now LSU's offensive coordinator. Again, it's no disrespect. LSU compared to USC, though, Lincoln Riley has produced three Heisman finalists and two Heisman winners. Mike Denbrock's coming from Cincinnati. LSU's new quarterbacks coach came from Louisiana Tech. And so when I look at this recruitment, I still think it's probably USC's to beat, and it's because of what I said. Every piece of information we have says USC's the team. Every piece of information says that they too have had success in the portal. And of course, if the ultimate end game is for Caleb Williams to get to the NFL as prepared as possible, it's hard to argue that anybody be- that there's anybody better than Lincoln Riley, especially relative to the schools that Caleb Williams is considering. But what I would say is, the more I've dug into it, the more I can see the argument for LSU and why it would be a good pitch for Caleb Williams. But as I said, I would expect a resolution soon on Caleb Williams' recruitment. And at this point, I don't know how much it would surprise me if the LSU Tigers ended up with this star quarterback.